gang, this is a quick update on my earlier video on how to make N95 OID masks out of HEPA filters and CPAP masks. Quick recap, uh, the government's telling us to use uh, scarves, bandanas, uh, heavy metal t-shirts, whatever, it's a desperate situation, and this is definitely not perfect, okay? Uh, my original disclaimer will be at the very, very end of the video. First change, I recommend buying a HEPA air filter instead of HEPA vacuum cleaner bags. They're a lot easier to breathe through and they still have the critical 0.3 micron size pores. Here's one that comes in sort of an accordion pattern. Uh, there's these little plastic connectors, but if you gently pull them apart, gently, you'll see it unfolds pretty easily. They're delicate, so take it slow, but there's a lot of surface area and that could equal a lot of masks. You can use a CPAP mask like this one or an anesthesia mask like this one. You can see that the CPAP mask has a much larger aperture. Unless your mask has its own straps, you're gonna to have to make some. Uh, I'm gonna go over how to use those uh, 3M command uh, frame mounting hooks a little bit more closely. You get this little sticker thing and you peel off the black side and press that firmly against the mask for about 30 seconds. Then you peel off the blue side of the sticker and press a little plastic hook on the front. Glue four of these on the mask, all facing the aperture. Be sure to put them on the flatter part of the masks and not where it's all curvy. Attach whatever you need for elastic straps. Here I'm using rubber bands that you could find anywhere. Tape them down so they don't pop off. Now cut out a round section of that HEPA air filter with a little excess material and tape it down securely over the aperture with non-breathable tape. Try the mask on and try and get used to it. What are you doing after work? You've got to control your breathing a little bit. You don't want to exhale so forcefully that you lose mask seal over your face. Anesthesia masks are tougher because their front aperture is a lot smaller and it's too uncomfortable to breathe in and out through that with a HEPA filter. The good news is that they already make viral filters for ventilators that can fit right in. These work great if you can get them. If you can't, you can take one of those T-pieces from those nebulizer kits that we're not supposed to use anymore. One end fits securely into the anesthesia mask. Tape HEPA filter over the other two openings and then put the final end inside the mask and tape it down. You've just doubled your surface area and it makes breathing much, much easier. You can do lots of crazy things like putting the top half of a nebulizer chamber in one port and a peep valve on the other, though I think I'd rather die than walk around looking like this. Hi there, I lied, it's a new disclaimer. Uh, please remember that everything I've showed you here is only possibly ethical because of the desperate times we're in, pandemic with lots and lots of death and no protective equipment. So as soon as real protective equipment becomes available to you, please use that and don't trust what I've come up with here. Speaking of not trusting, that's the first rule of emergency medicine. Um, don't trust anyone 100% right now. Remember, your administrators may speak with great authority and conviction, but deep down they're terrified and they're afraid of losing their jobs and getting in trouble. The government is saying things like, oh, well, we're out of N95 masks. Well, eh, we never needed them anyway. You know, they're trying to protect their jobs, their careers, their futures, their reputations. Nobody is putting you first except for you. So be skeptical of everyone around you. That includes me, and that even includes yourself. Uh, and be thoughtful. Good luck.